Hello everyone. Today our topic is representing algorithms. Representing algorithms means how to express algorithms in a clear, precise, and unambiguous manner. There are four major methods for representing algorithms in terms of natural language, in terms of formal programming language, in terms of pseudocode, and by using flowcharts. First, we can represent an algorithm in terms of natural language. Assume, for example, that we want to find the largest number in an array or list. We can describe the algorithm as follows. Assume the first item is largest. Look at each of the remaining items in the list, and if it is larger than the largest item so far, make a note of it. The last noted item is the largest in the list when the process is complete. The main advantage of this method that it's familiar. However, it has several disadvantages. It's verbose, imprecise, which leads to ambiguity, and it's rarely used for complex or technical algorithms. Really, we use this method every day for describing our activities. The second method used to represent algorithms is in terms of formal programming language. Here, the algorithm is coded using one of the programming languages, such as C++, Python, Java, and others. For example, we have here a C++ program to find the largest element in the list. Here, the first element is assigned to a variable max. Then we start a loop ranging to the length of the list. And in every iteration, we compare the next element with the max location. If the next element is greater than the max location, then we store this element in max. After completing the loop, we can print the maximum element in the list. This method has the following advantages. It's precise and ambiguous. The second advantage, it will ultimately program in these languages. And the third advantage of using this method, that we can directly run the program to obtain the results. And this method has the following disadvantages. It can be too low level for algorithm design. It has syntactic details, which are not important at the algorithm design phase. And it's not familiar for the person who is not interested in this programming language. The third used method to represent algorithms is in terms of pseudocode. Pseudocode is a compact and informal high-level description of a computer programming algorithm that uses the structural convergence of some programming language, but typically omits details that are not essential for understanding of the algorithm, such as subroutines, variable declarations, and system-specific code. There is no standard pseudocode syntax. A program in a pseudocode is not an executable program. So an algorithm represented in a pseudocode form has to be coded or programmed in order to be executed. For example, we have here a pseudocode for finding the maximum element in a list. A pseudocode has the following advantages. It's a middle ground compromise between the natural language form and the programming language form. It resembles many popular programming languages. Pseudocode is relatively free for grammatical rules. Only will defined statements are included. We can consider it as a programming language without details. However, compared with the flowchart, it's difficult to understand the program logic. Pseudocode consists of natural language like statements that precisely describe the steps of an algorithm or a program. Statements describe actions. Pseudocode focuses on the logic of the algorithm or a program. It avoids language specific elements. Pseudocode algorithm is written at a level so that the desired programming code can be generated almost automatically from each statement. Usual steps are numbered, subordinate numbers, and or indentation 
are used for dependent statements in selection and repetition structures. Next, the pseudocode language constructs. For computation or assignment, we can use compute, assign, increment. For input, we can use get variable one, variable two. For output, display variable one, variable two, etc. You can use the other words. For example, instead of get, you can use input. Instead of display, you can use output or print, etc. Next, selection constructs. Single selection if, if condition then, if condition is true, then perform statement one, else skip statement one. Double selection if, if condition then, perform a group of statements, else perform another group of statements. Switch constructs, we switch to one of the cases depending on the value of the expression. Repetition constructs, while, do while, and for. In the while construct, while the condition is true, then we continue performing the statements. In the do while structure, the condition is tested at the end of the loop. So in the do while structure, these statements will be executed at least once. In for structure, we repeat executing a group of statements a specific number of times. For example, we have here a pseudocode to get two numbers divided and divisor and to compute the quotient. Here we have to test if the divisor equals zero, then display error message, divisor must be non-zero, and we exit the algorithm. Otherwise, we compute the quotient and display the three values, dividing divisor and quotient. The next method for representing algorithms is the flowchart. A flowchart is a graphical representation of an algorithm. Once the flowchart is drawn, it becomes easy to write the program in any high-level language. The main symbols used in flowcharts are process, any type of internal operation, data transformation, data movement, logic operations, etc. Input, output of data, decision symbol, evaluates a condition or a statement, and the branches, depending on whether the evaluation is true or false. Connector, connects sections of the flowchart so that the diagram can maintain a smooth linear flow. Terminal, indicates start or end of the program or algorithm. And the flow lines, arrows that indicate the direction of the progression of the program. Benefits flowcharts are makes logic clear, effective analysis, easy to code and test. And limits flowcharts are difficult to use for large programs and difficult to modify and test. In the next meeting, we'll discuss different flowchart constructs and different examples on flowcharts. For today, that's all. Thank you.